In this video, we're going to install Django, create our first Django project, and explore what Django gives us by default for creating our project. But first, we need to confirm that we're working inside the correct virtual environment. We can tell that I'm working inside the readit virtual environment because we can see readit at the beginning of my command line prompt. A very common mistake is to see an error such as dependency or package not found. Usually this is because you're not working inside the virtual environment where you've installed your packages. So safe in the knowledge that we're in the right place, let's install Django. So we're using pip to go up to PyPy and retrieve the latest version of Django, which at the time of recording is Django 1.8.4. We can confirm that that's been installed properly by using the pip freeze command. So we can see Django there, and we can also see wheel, which is installed by default. The next thing we need to think about is where on our computer we want to install our project. On my computer, I have a folder called projects. You might have something like code or something else. Move to that folder now. As you can see, my folder's empty. Now we're going to use one of Django's inbuilt command line utilities to help us create our first project. So in this instance, we've used the Django admin utility and we've specified that we want to start a project with the name readit. Now, if we list out our folder again, we'll see that a new folder has been created. And if we have a look at what's inside that folder, we can see that we have a number of pre-generated files. The first to talk about there is manage.py. This is essentially a thin wrapper around a command line utility. We're going to be using this a lot as we build our project. In fact, the first thing that we're going to do with this is tell Django to sync our database using the migrate command. Now, if we list out our folder again, we can see a SQLite database inside our readit folder. Now that we have our database, we can actually go and see what our Django project looks like. And manage.py gives us another utility to do that. Let's use the run server command to run a local server on our computer. And opening that link. Congratulations, your first Django powered page. Now, as I'm sure you can guess, 127001 is actually my local host. So a shortcut to accessing this server is to type localhost 8000. If you're already developing something else on port 8000, you can also specify a different port when you run the server. For now, let's go back to our folder. So besides our database and our manage.py, we can see a folder called readit. And this is the root of our project installation. Those familiar with Python will recognize the init.py file. This is telling Python to treat this folder as a Python module. We can ignore this and pycache and wsgi.py. wsgi.py is going to be used later to deploy our project. For now though, we're most concerned by settings.py and urls.py. Let's open these up and see what's inside. First, we have our settings.py. And as the name suggests, this is where we keep all of the settings for our project. When we created our project, Django gave us a whole lot of default settings. In fact, we've already used one of these default settings. Scrolling down, we can see that there's a database setting. This is what told Django to create our initial database with SQLite. We're going to be using the settings.py file a lot as we develop our application. The other file of note is urls.py. Think of this file like a dynamic traffic director. When a request comes in, the requested URL is compared to each URL pattern in the list. If a match is found, then the request is sent to the specified view. The example URL we can see is for Django's built-in admin. The orange part of the URL is a regular expression that matches slash admin. Let's go and have a look at that in our browser. When I requested the admin URL, Django found a match and then sent that request onto the specified view. In this case, Django is doing something a little bit more complex and including a list of other URL patterns to match that pattern to. But don't worry about that for now. We'll be coming back to this file again later when we explore how to set up our URLs and our views. But first, we need to create an app to live inside our project. This terminology can be a little bit confusing for new Django Nauts. It certainly was for me. In Django, an app is a self-contained or mostly self-contained module that lives inside a Django project. Django comes with its own built-in apps. In fact, the admin app is one such app. By default, in fact, Django enables six apps and we'll be looking at those later. But you can create your own custom apps to create your own custom functionality. Let's go ahead and do that now. When creating apps, we need to think about the different parts of our project and how we might separate them thematically. 
For example, if we were building an e-commerce platform, we might have a checkout app separate to our products app. As our project is quite small, we're only going to create one app called Books. To do this, we need to go back to the command line. First, let's cancel the server with Control C. Next, we can use Django's inbuilt command line to start a new app. Looking again at our tree, we can see that Django has created a new folder for us. And inside that folder, we have a whole lot of Python files. We'll be using all of these to build out our custom functionality. Now we know that Django has apps and that we can build our own apps, but there's actually a third type of app available. And that is third party apps that have been developed by other developers that we can use in our own projects. Most of these are hosted on PyPy, so we can simply pip install them. We're going to do that with one of Django's most popular third-party apps called Django Debug Toolbar. It's going to help us debug our application as we build it. Again, we can use pip freeze to confirm that that's been installed correctly. And we can see that it has been installed correctly along with SQL Pass, which is one of its dependencies. Now we've created our app, we've installed a third-party app, but we haven't actually told Django about either of these apps. To do that, we need to go back to our settings.py file. Scrolling back up, we can see that there's a setting called installed apps. And inside that setting, we can see six apps that Django gives us by default. Now order matters here. So generally we want to list the Django apps first, third party apps second, and our own custom apps third. So let's do that now for debug toolbar and books. Let's run our server and see what's happened on our project. If I refresh the page, we can see now that we have Django Debug Toolbar installed on the right hand side. We don't need to go into the details of everything that this is doing right now, but certainly it will be handy to have in the future. For now though, most of our grunt work is finished and it's almost time to start coding. But first we need to put this code into version control. We're going to be using Git to track our changes and later GitHub to host our code. If you have a GitLab or Bitbucket account, they should work too. First, let's go back to our terminal. Cancel our server. Now let's see what we've got. We can see amongst our untracked files that we have our database. Now we don't want to include that database in our version control. And there's also some other files like .pycs that don't need to go into version control either. So we need to create a git ignore file. Let's open up our text editor and create a new file. Now if you go to the supplementary material supplied with this screencast, you should be able to find a .git ignore file in the read it folder. Copy the contents from that file and paste it into your own. Now save this file as .gitignore. Now switching back to our terminal, if we rerun git status, we should see that git will no longer track our database. Fantastic. Let's add and commit this. Congratulations. You've installed Django, you've created your first Django app, and you've also installed a third-party application.